For Sunday, August 15th, this is News 7 Nightcast. Pope John Paul wrapped up his U.S. visit with a farewell address tonight. A hijacker has been taken into custody in Germany. We'll have a report. Some wounded Bosnian children find relief for their injuries in London. And more than 130 Puerto Rican prisoners are in Florida after reports they were mistreated at a New Mexico prison. Details on these stories and much more... Straight ahead on the Nightcast. This is New 7 Nightcast, rated number one in El Paso and southern New Mexico. Pope John Paul is heading back to Rome tonight after concluding his U.S. visit. Good evening and welcome to the Nightcast. Just before the Pope left, he delivered a farewell address to the faithful at Denver's airport. America defends life so that you may live in peace and harmony. God bless America. God bless you all. Earlier today, thousands of those in attendance had to be treated for heat strokes, suffered while they basked in the sun as they attended the Pope's ecumenical service. It was during that service that the Pope touched on some of the divisive issues facing the Catholic Church. He made it clear there will be no compromising on the Church's opposition to artificial birth control and abortion. Naturally, the weakest members of society are the most at risk. The unborn, children, the sick, the handicapped, the old. The Pope also addressed the issue of sex abuse by priests, saying he shared the concerns of the victims. But he stopped short of recommending any specific punishment by the church. An Egyptian man is in custody tonight, charged with hijacking a KLM Dutch airliner in Dusseldorf. The man reportedly surrendered to authorities when they stormed the plane while it was on the ground at the airport. No shots were fired and no one was injured. It, was turned, it turned out the suspect was unarmed. The Egyptian hijacker said he had a bomb when he seized the plane during a flight from Tunisia to Amsterdam. The flight was diverted to Dusseldorf. There, the man released all but two of the 138 people aboard the Dutch airliner. The hijacker was demanding the U.S. release of a Muslim cleric who's been held in the U.S. in connection with the bombing of the World Trade Center. 21 of Sarajevo's critically ill patients will finally receive medical treatment they desperately need. They are, in the Britain, they are in Britain tonight for medical treatment they can't get because of their country is in war. The patients include seven children who were flown to London from Sarajevo and then transferred to treatment centers throughout Britain. Many patients are victims of the war-torn Bosnia, like a five-year-old boy who's suffering with shrapnel wounds to his legs and spine. More than 130 Puerto Rican prisoners say they were mistreated while serving time at a New Mexico prison. The prisoners spoke up as they were transferred from Estancia, New Mexico, near Albuquerque to Pompano Beach, Florida. The prisoners were originally sent to New Mexico to relieve overcrowding in Puerto Rican prisons. Puerto Rico has since broke off its contract with Corrections Corporation of America, which relocates prisoners for the Commonwealth. Well, we're just getting started on the nightcast. Just ahead, central El Paso neighbors clean up broken glass after six teenagers go on a shooting rampage at a party. And a Fort Bliss homecoming for the last contingent of troops arriving from Southwest Asia. For Clint, Horizon City, and Alamogordo. This is New 7 Nightcast. El Paso's largest and most comprehensive health care provider has changed its name. El Paso Healthcare System is now Columbia Healthcare System with Columbia Medical Center East, Columbia Medical Center West, Columbia Behavioral Center, and all the other Columbia facilities in between. Working together, making things better, we're the one. Our ownership, our leadership, and commitment to excellence remains unchanged. From advanced diagnostics to oncology to open heart surgery, we have built a network of eight quality health care facilities throughout El Paso. We're one name, one team, committed to meeting and exceeding your health care needs. And that's why El Paso's largest health care provider is also El Paso's leader. Columbia.
you get great clothes for the whole family? Only at Ross. Everyday prices below department store sale prices? Only at Ross. The best brands for less? Only at Ross. Where do bargain hunters shop every day? Only at Ross. Ross. The only difference is the price. It's our Rudolph 33rd Annual Rooftop Clearance Sale with tremendous selection and great prices going on now at Rudolph on Mesa next to UTEP. El Paso police are on the lookout tonight for six juvenile suspects believed to have shot three men. Gunfire ripped through the 500 block of Holiday last night, apparently outside the house of a party. Police believe the rampage occurred during a confrontation between six youths and three El Paso men. Three of the juveniles were armed, one with a shotgun, the other two with handguns. A street resident says she heard shots around midnight. And screaming and yelling, but when the police got here, I mean, the kids were already done, running down the street. And then go, as they were going down the street, they were breaking windows. But the, the police wasn't here yet. The three men wounded in the shooting were all treated and released from area hospitals. El Paso firefighters early this morning prevented a fire from giving patrons at a motel a blazing wake-up call. The fire department responded to a call of smoke emitting from the laundry room at the Best Western Executive Inn. The fire had ignited in the motel's sauna room and was not protected by sprinklers. The blaze was contained in about 20 minutes. Motel guests did not need to be evacuated. Property damage is estimated at $25,000. It's still not known if alcohol contributed to a double traffic fatality yesterday. The Department of Public Safety says it won't know for at least another week. 19-year-old Fernando Flores died, uh, this, uh, died when the pickup he was driving in the 1200 block of North Loop hit a fence post. One of his passengers, 18-year-old Frankie Melendrez, also lost his life. Another passenger, 18-year-old Yolanda Castillo, remains in critical condition tonight at Thomason Hospital. Authorities say none of the three were wearing seat belts. On a brighter note tonight, several El Paso families are relishing a homecoming. Today, the final contingent of Fort Bliss troops arrived from Southwest Asia. More than 200 soldiers were welcomed with happy tears, kisses, and hugs. These troops belong to the 2nd to the 7th Air Defense Artillery of the 11th Brigade, which participated in a rotation of duty in Southwest Asia. A battalion from Germany will replace them. Please stay with us. We have more to come on the Nightcast. We'll take a look at the last day of swimming at the Escarity Pool. And the pool may be closed for the season, but I'll bet our swimming weather is far from over, right, Gary? Yeah, absolutely. At least through Labor Day, probably right. beyond. Tomorrow's the first day of school. Can you believe that? Uh -oh. That's right. Kids aren't going to be happy. Yeah. They're, they're in bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Wake up call early tomorrow. Rain today? Well, we had some after midnight. 700, some parts of the city much more than that. Year to date total now 5.21 inches. 69 are low, 95 the high today. Last year, just about the same. Records 58 and 102. Air quality today in the good range. You may still water till midnight if you have an odd address. Sunrise tomorrow at 631. It'll set at 749. We'll check the work week and school week forecast in a minute. Opportunity usually knocks once. But due to overwhelming response, Cadillac is extending the summer clearance sale. Make your best deal, then get a $3,000 cash bonus on Sedan DeVille. Or a $2,000 cash bonus on Fleetwood. Cadillac's summer clearance sale continues for a limited time. Lucky for you. See Story Cadillac today. In Texas, we play tic-tac-toe a little differently. Tex Tac Doe from the Texas Lottery. Get three money bags up across or diagonal and went up to a thousand dollars. There's a new way to strike it rich. Texas Gold. You could win up to ten thousand dollars. How do you define value? Is it just a great price? Or does value mean getting a truck with the best mileage, the best resale value, and more standard horsepower than Ford? That's the way Chevrolet defines a rock-solid value. 
And right now, there's no finer example than the Chevy CK. Oh, and for that great price, go see your Southwest Chevy Geo dealers for that today. It's only been one month since the Escada to Swimming Pool opened, and it's already closed for the summer. Pool officials say about 350 swimmers turned out each day to make the pool a splashing success during its short-lived season. Next year, folks should get a full three months of splashing fun. The facility will reopen in mid-May. County officials say despite a few mechanical problems with the pool's pump and filter system, which caused a couple of closures, most reviews of the multi-million dollar facility have been good. Day here, and this is what the pool was for. And uh, I think the only uh, uh, negative uh, thing that I've seen is that we did open so late in the year. Controller believes next year's daily attendance will jump to about 500. Shade awnings and various activities are part of next season's plans. And that pool is a wonderful pool. Have you ever been? Big in one, it? no, I, but I've seen it. It's I haven't been inside it, but I've seen it. Big pool, plenty of room, very nice. Lots of sunshine too, Gary. Too bad it's uh all over for some of those slippers, right? It's back to school for the El Paso School District tomorrow, too. And, of course, uh, needless to say, watch out in those school zones. Slow down if you're a motorist. Here, a look at high temperatures in the region today. Generally, a couple of degrees higher than yesterday. 71 at Cloudcroft, 81 at Rio Doso, 92 at Socorro and Columbus, 81 at Silver City. It was 94 at Hobbs and 89 at Clovis. Take a look at the nation's high temps, 95 at Kansas City, it was 87 at Denver, 90 at Salt Lake City, 73 at Portland, 79 at Los Angeles, 109, the hot spot in the nation at Coolidge, Arizona, the cold spot, 31 this morning at West Yellowstone, Montana. Very hot in Texas and Oklahoma again, 101 at Tulsa and Dallas, 100 at Houston, 93 at Jackson, Mississippi, and at Raleigh-Durham, North Carolina, not to mention Washington, D.C., and New York City. Here's a look at the satellite in motion from our view, and you'll see a lot of clouds just to our south down in Old Mexico that weren't there a few hours ago. Take a look. They've just been building up over the last several hours, and that's much what ha like what happened last night. Still then think there's a chance of some thunderstorms in El Paso over the next two to three hours. Take a look at the national satellite and see uh, some heavy storms in South Dakota and Nebraska, roughly the area where there is a severe thunderstorm watch set to expire, though, within the next half hour. Also a line of storms. And Iowa, Illinois, all the way up uh, towards the northeastern states. In fact, some flooding reported at Charles City, Iowa, along the uh, Cedar River with the street flooding reported at Charles City. Line of showers from uh, roughly uh, Tumwa, Iowa, towards Peoria, Illinois, and then points east. Chicago today, an inch and a quarter of rain. Damage from thunderstorm winds uh, at Joliet and Lenox. And in fact, the one at Lenox may have been a tornado. Also, trees and power lines down at Detroit and Royal Oak, Michigan. Still pretty good storms down in portions of Louisiana. Uh, storms dying out in extreme southeastern New Mexico. At KVIA on El Paso's west side, partly cloudy, 83 degrees, lightning visible to the south. 51% humidity, no wind, barometer rising at 30 inches of mercury. The airport, 87, 39% humidity, east wind at 3, barometer 30.04 and rising. Partly cloudy for the remainder of tonight, still a chance of thunderstorms, low 70 in the morning. Winds will be light and variable for tomorrow. Uh, partly cloudy skies, a lot of sun early in the day, and then uh, it'll be increasing. Could have a shower a little earlier tomorrow than we've had the last couple of days. Winds mainly out of the southeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Scattered showers and thunderstorms in eastern uh, New Arizona, scattered throughout New Mexico, and the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma, and maybe even around San Antonio. They haven't had rain there in 50 days. Real unusual. High temperatures tomorrow, 85 at Rio Doso, 90 at Albuquerque, 93 at Deming, about 95 at Las Cruces, 91 for Tucumcari, and 92 at Lubbock. El Paso's low in the morning, 70, warming to 95, uh, Tuesday as well. Then we'll see a little clearing, and that means warmer temperatures, not as muggy, 97 on Wednesday, 99 Thursday. Anita, Victor? All right, thanks a lot, Gary. I can deal with some rain. Sure. Cool things on. 
Sports is just ahead on News 7. The shark is now four times bitten. Jill Carlson explains and has all the day's sports when we return. The kids and I had a great summer vacation. We drove everywhere, except to the gas station. Our Geo Metro gave us a whole lot of smiles, a whole lot of fun, and gave me a whole lot of miles. At $159 a month, this spa is so smart, and no down payment really warms up my heart. Well, vacation's over, but the value's still here, and you get honest value every day of the year from some real straight shooters, your Southwest Chevy Geo dealers. Riker slips into madness. On Star Trek, the next generation. Hey, thank goodness for the new Arby's Melt Sandwich. Just 99 cents. Loaded with lean oven roasted roast beef. The Arby's Melt comes with a thick, velvety blanket of tangy melted cheddar. Just 99 cents for a limited time. Ouch. The new Arby's Melt, just 99 cents right now. Proving once again that America's a great country and different is good. It's like I never have enough time. Well, between work. The kids. The house. I don't have time to drive all over the place. That's why we shop at Cielo Vista Mall. It's close. And it has stores I know. You can get in and get out. And still get what we need. That's what matters. I always go there first when I want to go shopping. Because I know I'll find what I need there. Which means <laughs> I have more time for work, the kids, the house. It's just that easy. It, it has to be easy. He lost again. She's talking about the <laughs> shark. Yes. The shark gets bitten four times, you said. Four times now. You, you really have to feel for the guy. I mean, I, I mean, no one else has been in contention as many times as he has to win the major. Yes, that's true. He lost again. You take away the two British Opens Greg Norman has won over the last 11 years, and what you have is heartache and disappointment. Today, Norman lost his fourth playoff in a Grand Slam event, having lost now in each of the four majors. The shark's bite became a little less vicious on the sixth hole. Norman needed two shots to get out of the bunker and ended up with a double bogey. Paul Azinger put on the pressure down the stretch, though, just what Norman didn't need. After 72 holes of golf, Azinger was in the clubhouse with a 12 under par. Still, Norman could have ended the drama with a birdie at 18, but his putts missed again, as they had all day. So they went back to the 10th hole for sudden death. Again, Norman had only to make the putt for par to force a third playoff hole with Azinger. This putt lips out. Afterward, the new PGA champion was gracious to his counterpart. I mean, this guy just blitzed the field at the British Open, uh, shot an incredible 63. He's in contention every time he tees it up, and yet he gets criticized all the time. And, uh, I do empathize with Greg a little bit. Uh, you know, it, it's tough to lose a tournament that way, especially one of this magnitude, one that I'm sure he would dearly love to win. The final round of the ladies Chicago is sometimes challenged with suspended after after a torrential downpour and threats of a tornado. When play resumes tomorrow, El Paso and Christy Albers will tee off 11 shots off the lead at four under par. The lone big league game tonight featured the Braves against the Reds. It was another pitching duel. Jose Rio gets justice to ground into the double play. And can someone please fill me in on what happened here? Deion Sanders with a shot to left. He stretches it into a triple and with triple with a slide to 30. I don't know, kind of knocks the wind out of himself or something because he was down for quite a while, but he was okay. Since the single then scored him the only run of the game, the bravest, the bravest, the bravest in the duel, but still remain seven and a half game back, games back of the Giants. <laughs> it was turned back the clock night again at Cohen Stadium, and for a change, the visiting team brought out their old duds too, but you couldn't tell the two apart except for their hats and maybe the cars they were driving. Anyway, 
Maybe also their errors at short. The missions misplay the ball. Al Lewis scores from third. And then in the third, Todd Hollinsworth evens the score with the RBI double. The missions go on to beat the Diablos, which was apparently very upsetting to this poor little boy. Five to two, the final there. North Carolina authorities today arrested two 18-year-old men for the murder and armed robbery of James Jordan. The elder Jordan's death is now believed to be the result of random highway violence. Larry Martin Demery and Daniel Andre Green allegedly, allegedly robbed Jordan after he had pulled over to rest on the highway. They then shot and killed him before dumping his body in the South Carolina River, authorities say. That put to rest the theories Jordan's death was due to his gambling or business dealings just as James Raymond was buried today. Funeral services for Michael Jordan's father were held in a small North Carolina town. Jordan is survived by his wife and four children, all of whom say the head of their family was a great man. When, and to everybody, not only his brother, to, the, to everybody. And if anybody was in need and he could help him, he would help him. And he was always a businessman and, and he's a lot of love and he was the one who always showed you the future was attainable. That is a very sad story, and it's hard to move on without sounding, sounding cliche, but maybe in this case, laughter is the best medicine. So we begin this week's Sunday Funnies with words from Vince Coleman's attorney. Keep in mind, he was referring to Coleman's famed firecracker incident, but he could have been talking about any number of things in the wor world of sports this week. It was clearly a stupid, dumb, foolish, childlike act, but... Make no mistake about it, this was an accident. There were plenty of accidents this past week. This was clearly a stupid, dumb, foolish, childlike act. But make no mistake, this was an accident. In Gary Sheffield's case, making this play was no accident. Some people just have it, and some don't. Diablo's manager Tim Ireland certainly had it out with the home plate ump in a game against the San Antonio Missions this week. My guess is they aren't making dinner plans. The Cubs' Sammy Sosa suggests they kiss and make up, but I don't think either one was willing to do just that. This was clearly a stupid, dumb, foolish, childlike act. This was an accident. And that's this week's edition of the Sunday Funnies, which probably weren't too funny for this ump. Ouch. You know, Ouch. baseball is really rough. I mean, every week we see somebody getting slammed by a ball or, or punched in, in the face. <laughs> or... the, su uh, the, sun, the Diablos came out in their old uniforms, you say? Yes, and so did the... They, the they couldn't have been very old, the Diablos. I mean, uh, to get real old uniforms, they'd have to pull out the Sun King uniforms. Now, there's real old. That would, that would have been old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm dating so. myself, too. Yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jill. All right, just ahead on the nightcast. We'll show you what it's like to play combat with paintballs. All the details when we come back. Thursday night, the Philly Fanatic returns to Cohen Stadium as your Diablos battle the Midland Angels. That's right, Fox 92 FM, Wrangler, and Peyton Meeks bring the fantastic, funny Philly Fanatic back to Cohen Stadium. And the first 5,000 fans will receive a 22-ounce thermal drinking mug. Wow, what a night! Drinking mug, the Philly Fanatic, and good time family fun. Brought to you by Fox 92 FM, Wrangler, and Peyton Meeks. Game time is 6.30. Diablo baseball. Come and catch the fun of Diablo baseball. So I'm thinking shrimp, but where do I go? Long John Silver's, the voice tells me so. It's oh, just the yeah. shrimp at Long John's will knock you out. It tastes so good, your eyes will bug out. For $1.99, you get a tasty crunch. Which suits people fine, they can eat a whole bunch. So I'm thinking, can this be real or is this a dream? So many great meals, I just want to scream. Hey, why? Skip on shrimp. I look for the sign that voice never lies. For $1.99, I got fish, shrimp, and fries. So if you love shrimp, you gotta go fish. Long John Silver's, you're gonna get your wish. At Lighting Showcase and Ceiling Fan Outlet, you'll save money on El Paso's largest selection of lighting fixtures and genuine craft-made fans. We display over 1,000 exciting lighting fixtures and over 90 different ceiling fans. We offer 29-inch, 36-inch, 42-inch, 52-inch, 56-inch, and 60-inch ceiling fans in stock right now. So for the largest selection and the lowest prices, it's Lighting Showcase and Ceiling Fan Outlet, 1421 Lee Trevino, across from the Black Eyed Peas. 
Still some clouds with rain and some lightning back to our south. The, some of those appear to be heading this way, so can't rule out a thunderstorm yet tonight. Late in the day tomorrow and Tuesday as well, the high each day 95. Then decreasing cloudiness Wednesday and Thursday, highs 97 and 99. Anita, Victor. Okay, All Gary, right. thanks a lot. Our sports department just informs us that the Diablos tonight were wearing the El Paso Brown uniform circa 1920. Uh-oh. That's still long That's really before my time. <laughs> and your time, of course. <laughs> well, there's a new sport making its mark across the country now, and it's here in El Paso. These weekend warriors are taking aim at each other in a game of what's called paintballs. Although they use guns, this isn't a war of real weapons. It's more like combat with color. Players engage in a grown-up version of Capture the Flag. The guns shoot colored gelatin capsules, and of course, the goal is not to get hit, but if you do, there's no need to worry. The paintball stains rinse out with water. Well, I, th I think we come out as a family, and uh, this is an opportunity for me to do something on their level in terms of this is, this is their kind of sport. Uh, we go fishing also, we go camping, we go hiking, backpacking, but this is just another thing to bring us together and to take us out so I. If you'd like to give the game of paintballs a shot, you can call 857-8128. And that's the night cast for this Sunday night. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next weekend. Actually, I won't see you next weekend. I'll be on vacation. Well, have, have a good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good night. Good night. <laughs> New seven fashions were chosen at the Popular, where you'll find great values on back-to-school fashions at all four Popular stores. More people in El Paso. Southern New Mexico and West Texas get their news and information from KVIA, seven together, than from any other source. Saturdays and Sundays.